Welcome back from the break, everybody. Thank you for being patient, but we're now live once again with the day here. Blast premiere. Yeah. Backstage. It's the great debate. That's what we're going to be hopping right into. And that's what we hyped up going into the break. And now we're just going to get right into it. So let's go ahead and show the rest of the people here who are now with me. Yes, thank you. The big preseason debate show. Thorin, Sponge. You guys saw Banks earlier, but if you haven't, Banks is here as well. Four 30 plus year old men <laughs> yell at Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not wait, wait, 30 wait, yet. Not Don't 30 put yet. me there. Okay. Yeah. This year. Four almost 30 year old men. Yell at clouds. That's, That's the what wrong this angle. What be. you need to do, I learned this from Riot Games recently, actually. What you do is you see. <laughs> you learn something we from Riot. Have, we have over 100 years of collective experience here. <laughs> yeah. Which obviously then sounds stupid because it sounds like we like, invented this like, post Victorian <laughs> age. You know? That's the angle, right? Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, okay. You were alive when these buildings were getting built up here. Three bills. Seen it all. Fucking seen it all. I mean, Scoots was, but he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's at Disneyland right now. Why? He you just said that. <laughs> All I'm going to say is... Who he is? Ah, I'll just leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, what the hell is he doing in Disneyland? Why not? I'm Star Wars. Yeah, but Star Wars. <laughs> my <laughs> bad. My bad. Right yeah. for fun. I mean, dude, lightsabers. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, dude, that what? is... <laughs> they said we could go for as long as That's we wanted. Old, I, did. <laughs> I, old, no, I didn't realize that I had freaking <laughs> James yeah. Harding on the show with me here. That's how we opened the good show back in the day. All right, well, I'll let you guys go find the VOD if the you want. The least direct for anyone there. Yeah, exactly. Go find the VOD if you want. But, uh, yeah. Basically, guys, we're just here to talk uh, smack about everything, all things CS. Obviously going to be closing out Blast Pro Series from last year and going into Blast Premiere, which is the new format for 2020 for Blast. Two seasons and a whole different approach. So, yeah, we can hop right into that. I mean, let's, let's actually just say, Duncan, I know you're going to have quite a few opinions on the topic. Sure. I mean, moving out from Blast Pro Series, that was definitely something that uh, you expressed a lot of... Uh, you made a lot of content made about. Clear why yeah, you made it pretty clear. You want to reiterate uh, real quick, just a TLDR. Basically, I've, listen, I, people might not know this. I've always hated best of ones in every context. Like, sure. actually, the only time I ever got tricked into thinking they were all right was when we brought Swiss System in, mm. because initially the novelty of the idea you can play anyone next seemed cool. Sure, sure. But even then, that had its flaws. Sucked a bit, exactly. Yeah. You got teams that went three zero and then habitually just went out in the first round. So. Yeah. Even when you have, like, uh, DreamHack Open uses the classic format we used in CSGO for many years. I always hated the idea that, like, you can get to the playoffs without playing a best of three. Yeah. Because at that point in time, we just know, like, first of all, very quick side tangent. You don't veto the same way in a best of one that you do in a best of three. Mm -hmm. You can't get exposed in the same way in a best of one unless you really have no map pool overlap whatsoever. So it just means you're almost like encouraging teams that are probably more near the middle to have the one off day. That's amazing. And it seems like that's building a storyline, but actually you're, you're setting everyone up for a nasty surprise sometimes. Yeah, Counter Strike, I think, and it's hard because we don't really have any metrics to pin things by, right? You kind of, if you win the major, you carry that belt of being the major champion until the next sure. one. But I think the way that like I measure like good counter-strike teams or what i want to see the most here is is teams being consistent over a long period of time right because mm -hmm. astralis being the greatest for a long period that's what i want to see sure i want to see teams go on those runs and i also want to show see them show depth over as many maps as possible we don't want to see you know if you're the specialist on nuke like they were you could win that one but you start to win their map pick or go to a third and have some middle ground so i, I think that now with this best of three system that we have going on here you know it's more of what people are used to i, I will say that the recent changes from valve with the economy uh, have meant that I think best of ones are more viable because pistol rounds have less influence. So, sure. But I still think that your knowledge base over seven maps or six maps for most teams is important to have because that shows how good you are across the board of Counter-Strike, not just in one specialty area. And I think that's kind of where I look at it and I go, okay, so now we're talking real Counter-Strike, right? We're seeing everybody having to get put through their paces. It's not just rocking up and hopefully having one good day, like you're saying, winning two best of ones and going straight through. You have to do it through a longer form. You have to do it in, in matches where, you know, you're, it's not your comfort zone. It's usually going to be your, your well, hopefully if people are vetoing correctly, your weakest map. So hopefully now with, with this new system that Blast have put in place, it's going to be, they're going to release some details tomorrow, I think they were told us, about mm -hmm. like how, how all the global final stuff's going to work. But I, that's going to have that in mind, is, is, is the whole year. So that should be exciting stuff. Anything to add? Uh, I would just say, like, I think a flaw is because people are so used to the old days where you had the best of ones, then you go into the best of threes for the playoffs, and then, I mean, sometimes you even have best of five for a final. People have this, like, aversion to the idea of, like, yeah, but 
if I've already seen them play best of threes, or if I've even already seen them play each other, like, hasn't it ruined the surprise? Yeah. I can tell you, if you've ever watched Dota 2, where they commonly had this full circuit system where they had double limb and they had best of threes in the group stage, the best of three in the group stage has a different feel anyway. In fact, sometimes there you will experiment with a map. Yeah. Because sometimes you'll you'll sometimes play, agree to sure. almost like a handshake, like we'll meet in the middle on the map, say, let's just see who plays. So it's not like that'll ever ruin a playoff match if they meet later. In fact, it can build into the storyline. I just have one thing here, right? Like I look at, so for example, a best of one, a best of three, and a best of five are all like different disciplines in mm -hmm. a way. It's like if you think about tennis, there's clay court, there's grass court, they, they play indoors, they play outdoors. Uh, obviously not as drastic of changes there, but it's still different like playing fields and stuff right as well. And I think, curiously, I know a lot of people don't like best of five finals because it's such a long day, right? You could yeah. be talking eight hours. Sure. I'm there with you on that one. I think it's a bit much. I, I think for like the viewers of a, of a casual viewer base, right, they're not going to be tuning in for all five maps. There's the, unless, unless you are like a super Counter-Strike fan, that's very rare. But what I like about it is... Obviously, it's very long form, but I like the fact that it is it is a ramp up, right? Like it is the sense of, well, if you want to be the best, you have to win on five. It's like it's like in the UFC, their title fights go five rounds. When you're fighting normally, they're fighting in three rounds. Okay, now you want to fight for the belt. Now you want to fight for the actual title. Well, let's go. Let's, you know, let's let's be the best we can. So I think that the, these things, it, it depends on how you frame it and how you look at it. And there's good and bad things with all this stuff. I, I'm hoping that this year, with all the different TOs we have, we see different formats. I don't want us to have every event running like a GSL or yes. every, because then mm -hmm. that's, that's boring, right? Like we want to have <coughs> competitive formats, but we also want those formats to be a little bit different, right? Because it's going to offer different things for the viewers. And I, and I think that's some, some interesting things we could look into this year. Okay, but wouldn't that have been the case last year then? I mean, Blast was running their own format. Yeah, the other tournaments were best of one. Best of, I want good formats, okay. right? Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. fair enough. You know, when we talk about fair variety, we don't mean like enough. that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we could also take a look at the seeding and how that's all right. unfolded. We have a graphic uh, there to check that out as well. So as far as um, the seeding is concerned for the Spring Series, Strawless Team Liquid Evil Geniuses at the top. I don't think that's a big shocker, is there? There's well, one that already leaps out to me right now, which is... Listen, this is where, I, obviously, I don't know how this was determined. They seated each the other. Teams, yeah, the, the teams seated each other. Oh, yeah. one that, to that's 11. very interesting, then, because the one that shocks me is FaZe Clan is above Vitality. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that doesn't shock me based off of things that I've been hearing behind the scenes oh, at the yeah. start of the year. Oh, okay, oh, okay. okay. All right, so... so much like this one time. Watch I, out. Look, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to put anything into this. I'm not going <laughs> to give away too many details here, but things have been sounding like they've been going well for FaZe Clan. Okay. Things also sound like they've been going very well for Na'Vi with yes. the change of, of Perfecto over Guardian. Makes so sense. those two teams right there are the highest ones on my radar, right? I'm expecting Astralis, Liquid, EG all to show up in the same way they did before uh, 2020 rolled around. But Na'Vi and FaZe... I, 100 Thieves are all, like, the fact that they're seated fourth, I think... Oof, it's like, like giving them a bit too much credit. They're a good team. They're very good fundamentally. But let's say Na'Vi and FaZe were as good fundamentally as 100 Thieves. They're obviously not right now because we haven't seen it. But let's, then, I think they blow 100 Thieves out of the water. No, but yeah. that's the edge 100 Thieves has. Is that yeah, one reason true. I enjoy watching them play is, quite frankly, I'll go right to the top. Except for Astralis, it's hard to find teams that actually have the same basis they do. They have the fundamentals. They have a pretty solid map pool. They veto correctly. Everyone does their job. Yeah. No big ego. Like the, If you wanted to design a team, if you wanted the Disney movie team to follow, they'd be the ones you'd pick. Now, they're not going to win the tournament. It's not a real Disney movie. <laughs> Unfortunately, they, they get killed by the bad guy, which, you know, the rich kid at the end of the movie, but it's like Karate Kid Marvel. It's real. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> kind of realistic in a way. <laughs> I, but that means they must have been doing well in scrims themselves, I imagine. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, the, the confidence that a player like JKS would have gotten from being in the HLTV's uh, top 20, yep. that would have been huge for him, right? And, and I think that uh, Liaz and Gratisfaction also came alive in tournaments towards the end of 2019. We started to see more stuff out of them. That's just going to continue there. If Gratisfaction can be consistent as an AWP player, because he's the one who's the most in flux for the team, they're starting to look good. You know, we know what Jacob's going to bring. He's been solid almost his entire career. You've got JKS, who is a top 20 player in the world. Mm -hmm. Azar, I think, has done a fantastic job with Kassad as taking over this in-game leadership role and, and thriving in it, right? Like, in terms of his stats, they're not as good as when he was just a player. That's always going to be the case. But I think that the way that he's been able to manage this team, it's fantastic because they're a top, well, what are they now? They're a top top seven? It's something like that. They're in the top 10. Sure. But for an Australian team to have stayed like this for this long, that, that's that's massive leaps and bounds right there. I look at this thing here and I, I have huge question marks for that complexity, 
right? Yeah. Because well, that was going to be the follow-up. Is, is okay. the bottom yeah, half yeah, of the yeah, bracket? Yeah, yeah. Do we see? The top ones, I've got another one. Is okay. one that well, I, one I actually, the top first. One I actually found quite interesting is. As much as Team Liquid, the problem is when you think of the last six months, you just see every time they took a beating from Astrasi. Yeah, lost to it's Astrasi. Kind of true, yeah. But what you what you don't see, uh, what you do now in this seeding now is they also beat a lot of teams to get to those matches against Astralis. And I would assume most of the other teams in the scene remember still losing to them eight months mm -hmm. ago, not being up. So as a result, everyone else has given them mad props there. They put them over EG. EG's won two titles in the last few months. Like yeah. They're actually giving them their fair due and say they are the number two team. Mm-hmm. EG aren't going to start practicing according to I'm a pet until now. Like they're not, they're not back. Well, I, I think because uh, I think because they have two weeks, right? I mean, are they there in the last group? I think they're in the last group, aren't they? So they probably have a bit of a lead in time right there. But Shoot, do they, we have a group? Do we have a do we have a group bracket? They played right up until the end. Of oh last no, they year. were. Listen, even probably, I thought that they, they were. They were the team complaining the most about being burned out. Yeah. yeah, they were pretty toasted at the end of the year, weren't they? They seem to be every. <coughs> I think they almost did more events than me, which uh, would have <laughs> which been is, quite Which is definitely an yeah. issue. Yeah. 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 What was it? What, what did you get to? 45 days? At home. Straight? No, straight. Oh, no. I don't remember. That was stupid. That like, stretch you, you were, was so you were, dumb. That was yeah. really bad. I. The thing is, like, I don't have the stress that they have, like flying around having to compete. Sure. It's just like when you wake up and you know, like, oh, my God, I have to go have makeup again. And like, it was like, oh, they, you know, it's, it's, it's eventually you start questioning <laughs> life decisions at that point. And whether or not you should sleep on cloud nine. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't anymore. It's all right now. That was like a darkness when someone said that to you. You were just lost in it. <laughs> somewhere. The thing is, I, I think what people don't, I don't want to, if they can't, if they can't use their, their brains and know that, you know, behind the curtain, we're actually reasonable human beings and we're entertainers and you guys seem to oh, like oh, it. Oh, don't, don't blow the whole show. When, 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 when we get <laughs> mad. What are you doing right now? Just come back. This, <laughs> it's supposed to be my entrance. They, they like it. They like it when we get mad, right? They like it. So. <laughs> Next thing you're going to tell me, Stone Cold wasn't actually fired by Vince McMahon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why, you know, like he's beating up his boss. That should have been against Labour Laws, surely. Uh, I was watching that uh, the other day where Trump's out there with McMahon and they're talking about setting up a fight. Like, it was obviously back in the day. I'm like, how is, how, how, how are we, we need that for Counter-Strike. Yes. Dude. Yes. What, Someone, Donald Trump? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jason, and and his back on track, so I'm like, get it. Yeah, yeah like, oh, where, where do I go? We from had here? the bottom teams. That's a good. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Segway Segway Trump. <laughs> sure. I mean, James, do you want to weigh in on that? Uh, on the, as far as the bottom uh, half of the seeds look? Well, I kind of what I expected with it. Maybe MIBR potentially put higher than what Nip was, but again, we don't know what we're going to see from Nip. Maybe it could be something more special. But sure. I expected complexity at the bottom because I'm not sold on that at all. No? Like, I'm not sold on what they... Because obviously he went in with the whole... Well, Jason Lake went in the whole thing of like he wants to buy everyone good. Even the ones he went for, he couldn't get at times yeah. with all that money. The facility looks amazing. Like, if you're oh. a player, I'd love that. That's the dream. It's what I think you need. I don't know how I feel about the Herman Miller chairs. They're Those probably are... not very good for counter strike I don't Dude, know. Those I, fire. I'm, I'm Mate, they're supposed to be like the best chairs so in the world. Good. I know, but like, like gaming and typing at your office desk, they're two different things. I wasn't uh, really th breaking down the <laughs> chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I was mainly just looking at the team, where they play yeah. it all. Like, he was like, uh, the cut their shirts and the grips really yeah. don't match. Well, you know, the first like, thing, I don't like the color. totally off in the office here. They're going to have bad vibes. First like. thing the chat does <laughs> when he walks into our green room is like, uh, th we're going to have to reorganize this. Yes, exactly we're going to have to move these couches. I am not having it. In right, the catalog. They got some furniture here we could probably steal. This looks all right. Anyway. You can see over the couches there. Dad's got Ikea. Who they've got, they've obviously got Blame F. That's who they picked as like. Yeah. They're driving force. And as somebody who plays a lot of Counter-Strike, and at least at, from forward-facing, what he puts out there is he lives and breathes Counter-Strike, right? Sure, definitely. So as that is your starting point, that's a very good place to be. You humbled Config somehow. I don't know what you did. <laughs> well, you wrote that article, but you humbled I sort of, I'm like the school counselor like, <laughs> with the dangerous kid from the, you know, the project. So I got through to him. And I opened him up and found out inside he was just a wounded animal. Those kids just at my school, for love. those kids at my Coach school just kicked, get, just kicked the teachers in the balls. So I, I surprised <laughs> you were able because yeah, you've like turned config into somebody now who's like you know oh he's, I, on, the, I, he's on the right path. He wants to go back yeah. in that yeah. because you think about it when he was on the up and up it was him and Magus in that in that dignitas team that mm -hmm. were like the yeah, they were the next the generation hitters. right. Config hasn't done a lot since then so now that he's in this project it's looking pretty good. Uh, I think Obo is a, is a youngster, which you, he's obviously got a lot of potential. We saw a little bit out of him at that face it event that they, they played there. We have Rush, yeah. and then Poison, and Poison was was doing. I like the way he skipped through it over Rush. There. I do the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah, Poison. Let's go to Poison. Yeah. No, because like people just like cite shit that happened two years ago. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. Anyway, they they talk about stuff <laughs> that happened two that. years ago. It it it's not two years anymore. No, like we're no, talking about in, in modern Counter Strike, right? That that's why like. 
he can fill a role. I think he can be a good role player. But when he was at his absolute best, you look at when Optic won that event and Stan was yes. in game leading and sure. when they won that major, that was a team that everybody had the freedom in both occasions kind of to make plays. And they got a lot done on momentum in both of those tournaments if you compare the in, com compare them, right? So I think Counter-Strike now is different to what it was definitely two years ago. Everybody can do everything. And I think that like entry fraggers, especially people like Apex, they struggle a lot in today's modern Counter-Strike because you're either being forced from the team in a direction that is you are an old school entry fragger, which doesn't work uh, any, any, doesn't any, exist anymore, right? So if he's still being pushed into those roles, then he's going to struggle as an individual because I think Counter-Strike, you have to be much more adaptive now in every scenario. So I, I still put Rush in one of those, oh, he's probably still tied to one of those hardcore roles. Mm -hmm. I want to see that change. I, I tried to watch as many of their matches as I could during the Katowice qualifiers and stuff. And it looked like they were very well regimented. They've done their dry runs. They've done their theory. They've done, you know, all that. But it, now it comes down to how they're going to play Counter-Strike in the mid-rounds, which is, you know, what separates the men from the boys these days. Well, this actually plays into, I know it's obviously one of your kind of pet narratives, which is about the angle of, like, can an international team, especially, like, a very international team, this isn't even just, like, like it doesn't count when, like, a Russian joins Na'Vi. Like, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. same thing, basically. Yeah. But the reason why when you have a player from Denmark and then a player from, where's Poison from Bulgaria or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Bulgaria with a player from Denmark like the, uh, and right, USA yeah, like yep. you're all yep. over the place with this so the problem they have is like I actually think their roster in terms of the players is underrated like they've got some decent pieces almost none of them except Rush who's playing a role like you say are really players you should give up on like they've all got potential yeah. they're all they've all shown signs some of them are already there or config was he's trying to get back sure the problem they have is and, and also they've got a base line that looks decent but they're the team that emphasizes how much team players needed in Counter Strike. Where's the chemistry? Yeah. Like, mm. I don't blame them for not having it immediately. You're starting from all over the place, bringing people together. So, the, if we see those teams, you get the rare examples that were amazing. The Phase Clans of the world once yeah, upon a time. Do they have a Kerrigan? That's the problem isn't as well. That the linking, yeah. Isn't that the link in all of these international People do rosters? ignore that. They always think, right, oh, so you can just stack all the players with one of the best mid-round in-game leaders who yeah. call stuff on the fly of all time. Yeah. yeah. If That's we... the dream guy to put with that. And even he couldn't make them win the major, man. Because <laughs> well, I guess if we pivoted from there, right, he had FaZe, which he, uh, FaZe have obviously struggled a lot since then, and they've had to go and rebuild and restructure. Now he's gone to Mouse Sports. And he's he's proven he's his formula. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? So it, it has to be a big part Carrigan. I think you'd have to credit like a huge amount of success to him as an individual. Whereas you look at this complexity team, so it's Blame F who is a new name on the tip of everybody's tongue still, mm -hmm. right? In, in the Counter-Strike world still. And he has picked up the in-game leadership role back when he was on Danish teams, not out of, you know, choice. Well, maybe he chose to do it, but it was out of more like a necessity or oh, we need an in-game leader. It wasn't, yeah. oh, we have MSL and he's going to be a player. It was, well, we don't have Snappy anymore. We don't have this guy. We don't have that. And he picked up the in-game leadership mantle. So. That for me is a curious one because it seems, you know, I haven't had a, an opportunity to talk to him a lot personally. It seems like he has a lot of drive and motivation. And those kind of players, if, if he is going to stay focused like that and build on that, you, he obviously has the mental fortitude. Look at the guy. You know, to go to the gym and to be built like how he is, you have to have some kind of, you know, pu pushing you in the right direction. If he can put even a little bit of that into Counter-Strike, I think that, you know, he can be a very potent player. In terms of in-game leadership, their coach is um, Keita. Yes, who, yep, yes, UK. UK player. Yeah, so, yeah. so, and I know that he was helping out with some teams previously with analysis. He's always been involved with analysis, yeah, so this is a nice step up for him. So for both of those names, though, they're not of the same pedigree, you know, as we're talking of like a character. So True. that's where they have a lot of proving to do, right? If they come out here and they show some unique strategies or they're good in the mid-rounds or we can hear their communication when, you know, because this is quite an intimate setup out here mm -hmm. and it sounds like everything's cool and calm and it, they've done a great job, right? And then it's probably just time of building this, this team. But yeah, I'm excited to see complexity because... Uh, obviously, Jason Lake has a m bunch of money behind this, and there's obviously and he made that abundantly clear. A yeah. lot of expectation. So, if this formula doesn't work, he picked a really good time, right? It was pretty dead towards the end yes. of last year in terms of what they could attend. So they've just been grinding, and now that 2020's kicked off, this is where we need to see the fruits of that labor. So this is going to be a, a big tournament for them. And the thing people miss with the one of those teams is it's similar to what Ocelot tried to do in G2, mm. which is by breaking the concept that we're going to just be French, and it's always like, right, who else is in the French scene? And you're looking around, and it's like you you keep recycling Recycle. and come back. Yeah. Should I get Kiyoshima again? We, we already had that discussion three months ago. What about Kiyoshima? So instead of that, by breaking it and bringing in the, the guys from former Yugo whatever former Yugoslavia area I, I think one of them technically is t Serbian and it's Bosnian or something weird. you need so I don't, I don't want to get into Where's the whole yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what I'll say is this 
the bit the part people missed is it doesn't matter if that G2 fails. It doesn't matter if this complexity five man fails because now you've opened the concept that I can bring anyone in. Mm -hmm. So, okay, maybe Hunter, I mean, he actually is playing pretty well, He's but really maybe good. one of them isn't that good. So then you go and get an amazing player. Maybe it turns out Poison's the one who doesn't develop. The others do. Right, okay, we can keep the rest and bring anyone into the team. So that's where you want actually the international team because then the amount of options you have, the amount you can flex in a different direction is huge. Hasn't he made that abundantly clear though as well with his tweet? Where he's just yeah. like, I mean, that's got to be an interesting for me, situation that's why for the, the players to be in because sure. your owner is saying, yeah, if you don't perform now, we've given you the time, we've given you the support, we've given you everything. And now if you don't perform, I've made it pretty clear that I've got the money to go and get one of the top tier guys as well. Yeah. But that's also what people, I think, missed as well. So everyone laughed at him like, ha ha, you call this a juggernaut. No, no, that was like an open offer. If I, yeah, even, exactly. I even said the line he missed is he should have said, and by the way, it's an open offer. Because then the implication should be, if I don't have a juggernaut now, I'm getting one step closer. And if I don't have it tomorrow, I'll get another yeah. step. And then eventually, you know what, Nico? You'll be available and I'll have them. And I, you'll be him at it. And then I'll have the juggernaut, you know. Yeah. One, day, one day, I guarantee that quote, if he ever gets a great team, that'll be the beginning of like a sick documentary. Yeah. Everyone laughed at him, said he was right. And then that'll be what he builds. Exactly. Again. Isn't it oh, wild? Like this. Isn't it wild that his hurdle, right? was getting people to move to North America. Th that's, that's, that <laughs> what, was the point. What a hurdle. Like, that's how good everybody and else in the rest of the world has to move to Dallas it. as well. Dallas hey, is popping off right now. It's hot out there, man. Some people can't handle the heat. AC, you never heard of that before? <laughs> oh, here, here's the, the FaZe Clan. They've been boot camping. They're off in uh, Belgrade, right? I think, think Yank. They were there, yeah. They were there yeah. for a bit. So, I look, these guys here, they qualified for Katowice on the online qualifier, start of the year. It wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad way to kick things off. And if they've been practicing since that, they've definitely made this like a big priority, right? And, and I think what people maybe who are tuning in now and they don't understand this, this isn't like the other Blast events where you come, you play the tournament and your result and then you go on and then that doesn't matter anymore. What you do right now, if you're phase, if you can come top two right here and you can, you know, get yourself a spot in those finals, then you're going to mean you don't have to come back. You don't have to play that showdown yep. situation. You're going to save yourself uh, another tournament where you can be focusing and doing a bit more practice, right? And that's what you hear from all these teams and all these individuals is we don't have enough time to practice. Well, now with a lot more... Let's be honest, none of these things, not all the formats are public right now, but none of these leagues that we've had running for the last couple of years anyway have ever really been run like leagues. Nobody liked it when it was best of twos. Nobody liked it when it was best of uh, one round robins yeah. and stuff, right? <laughs> these aren't traditional leagues. These are situations where you come, you qualify for the big boys part of the tournament, and you can technically buy yourself a lot of time off to practice more and have more focus elsewhere. Exactly. Have more more home time where you know you can you can spend time with your girlfriend with your family or whatever and then you can still practice you know a normal job but that because this is the cool thing about counter strike you can work from home you know so uh this is why i think phase have, have put a lot of prep into this one and i think you want to come out of the you want to come out real strong right you, this year when nostralis are the top dog liquid and eg are there the rest of these teams they need to come out real strong early and puts and, and you want to make a stake for yourself here because i know it's a bad thing to have a target on your back but I think that the way that Counter-Strike is moving at the moment is if you can be considered a top 10 team on a consistent basis, that's who we consider the elite now. Yeah. It never used to be so deep. I know we used to have discussions about this all the time. We're like, yeah, you know, the top three, the top four, they're looking pretty good, but the rest of them are, are pretty rubbish. Now the top 10 is really quite strong. Sure. And I think if you can cement yourself with, with some good showings early and you can keep yourself in that, because I think there's still a, a bit of room for movement in there. But uh, yeah, I think FaZe are going to be looking hot. With, with well, FaZe though, Chad, right? So you to look at since Brokey came in being the young player, he's been obviously killing it. But do you think they've still got an in-game leader problem that needs to be solved? I think it's been mitigated a little bit with Cold Zero because of how much he used to have to help uh, with Fallen. Well, not used to have to help, how much it was it was said that he helps with Fallen. Mm -hmm. um, so having him and Nico maybe do it, well, Olaf as well would have been a player making a lot of calls back in Fnatic there. So I don't think it's a, it's a huge drama. I'm not, I'm not right. buying it. I think Fear is garbage. Like yeah? the, really? the only reason they even have any status, any ranking, is because of the old system in Blast, where it was all the best of ones, and you had to win one best of three, and they did it a couple of times. That's how they were actually, if people forget, the circuit points, they were number one in the Blast Tour last year. They won Miami, yeah. right? And, and then they, they won, won right uh, towards the end. What was it, Copenhagen or yeah. something? Yeah, so is they won the right two one? of them. And But you look who they played. They played Team Liquid when they used to choke in the finals, and they played Nip, because bizarrely, them and Nip were the ones who made the final, even yeah. though yeah. the Astralis of the world were there, but lost the best of ones. So my problem with FaZe Clan is this. Like, if it was a different set of players, if they had just a bunch of good, if they had, like, crazy level players, like FPL players, I'd be like, yeah, cool, run the little experiment. It, yeah. What I hate is, like, when I was watching those highlights there, when we got to the end of the year and people were figuring out who are the top 10 players of the year, nobody even considered putting Nico as one of the top players, right? No one was saying Nico could be third or second. And the only reason why, when you look back, it's nothing to do 
his level play. Go watch him. He was still amazing, but he was literally bottlenecked by his team. His mm. team barely ever made a final of a different mm. tournament than Blast. His team never really won titles. They were always in situations where when they had a bad tournament, they get blown out as well. They get humiliated by a team liquid or someone. So as a result, you never saw the guys, you know, he never got a chance to shine. Yeah. Now, some of that's his fault. He's the in-game leader. He was re re responsible for Carrigan getting kicked, but I hate it whenever there's a really great player who's kind of like caged for a while. So I want to see him be one of the best players. He should be in this conversation with Simple, Z, Wu, Dubai. It should be like five players right now all going head-to-head. -head. We should have the best era ever of the super carries, basically. Yeah, I, I, I want to... I'm probably going to give him a little bit more slack for, like, this tournament right here, because they've had a lot of time to practice. They come here and they just choke and they don't put up any performance, then, yeah, I'm all with you in that sense. But I think from when Cold Zero joined, how difficult that contract negotiation would have been behind the scenes, because MIBR, you don't sure. want to let go of a piece like that, and if you are, you're going to milk as much money out of it as humanly possible. That happened in, like, the middle of the season, right? Like, it was, well, but it was more the start of the second half of last year that that kind of all went down, if I'm remembering rightly. Yeah. Um, so uh, you have to hit the ground running in that regard, right? Whereas now they've had a little bit of, they had they had some downtime over the holidays. We saw them all on the Instagram and stuff, hanging out in Brazil or wherever <laughs> they were, right, doing all that kind of stuff. They've had their downtime. They've had the mental reset. They've been boot camping. They've already qualified for Katowice. I saw what the confidence of them winning uh, Copenhagen did for the team. Mm. Now, if they can have all that and they put all the people, because they have the players, right? They have the players. They don't have the, the traditional in-game leader, but they have the players in terms of firepower and it should be good. Give him this. I'll say, look, if you can come out here and you can get a top two off the bat here, then yeah, we're, we could be heading in the right direction. When, when you say that, though, all of that has to end somewhere. So yeah. what, they're going to be the third best team in the world well, or something? Th that's the thing. I was going to say, do I think that they will consistently <laughs> beat the likes of like EG, Liquid and, and Astralis? Probably not. But can they hang in there within like the top five and be fighting for that against like a Mouse Sports or, you know, someone like, like a Fnatic, 100 Thieves? Then yeah. I don't think that they will be like I, I, it's. It's really difficult to see anybody on Astralis's level at the moment. Here's my prediction: Fears will be the eighth best team. There we in the go. World. That is all they will be. They'll have the odd tournament where they have a little run because they've got the bangers to, to go off in a game. Of course, okay. they'll have a tournament where they make a final or they'll make a semi final. But then they'll have tournaments where they come ninth to sixteenth or yeah. whatever it is. You know, where the placing is with Antonio. So, especially in a world where it's all best of threes in most of the formats now, you, there's not a, there isn't those best of ones where you can just have one brilliant day. You get a couple of games going. I think a team like that, it, the IGL aspect will become the major factor because that's another yeah. factor you can look at the top 10 with and you can ask questions is, at the moment, IGLs have an incredible value in this yeah. game. Almost yes. every great team at the moment has like a legendary IGL, not even just a good one, like some guy who's been around for years, who's won a major or has done all sorts. There's very few teams at the top there. That's why I give a lot of credit to Azar actually, because yeah. he doesn't have that status yet. His team's not knocking on the door there. So I, think, I don't think you can get past that with FaZe. We've already seen even having the best fraggers in the world, you still need that piece, I believe, to, to actually enter the elite status. I, was, I think, like, what is curious here, right, is because, like, we're talking about whether or not they will be... Like, it really depends on where you set that bar, right? Do we think this phase roster will be the best team in the world consistently for a three-month period? No. You I should guess. be if you have Nico and Cold Zero. I know, right? But, like, if we're going to look at the landscape right now, what we know from everything that we learned in that... After that whole, that whole fiasco that happened... Uh, with Astralis earlier in last year, they were the team. <laughs> he came so he was trying not to say the word there, the forbidden Voldemort type name. We, <laughs> it's all right, I invented it, so yeah, I, we, I give you permission. <laughs> we had ourselves a situation where we went almost back to regular programming, right? Like they lost that New York final to, yes. to EG. Um, they had a couple of hiccups, but then in terms of the way that they were playing themselves in game. Roll for roll, pound for pound, as far as traditional Counter Strike and fundamentals and everything we love, nobody is anywhere near Astralis, right? Like, True. I was I was just, like, sitting at home bored, which is basically my life, and I was going through, like, all the stats of these teams over periods of their rosters and looking at, like, the breakdown of, of kills. Like, And I was going through the, uh, the bunch of the high-level teams about the AWP frags, right? A lot of these teams, the liquids of the worlds, the phases of the worlds, they all share the AWPing duties. I'm doing these pie charts because I'm pretending I'm in school or something, and um, it's breaking up, and there's, look, there's three main AWPers. You do it, I'll see if I have them hanging around somewhere, but you, you do it for a team like Astralis. Device had something like, uh, something ridiculous. Probably 80% like, like of the AWP flags, it, is what it I'm going to guess. It was huge, yes. right? And then the, I think the next one was Dupree, and then it was yeah. then it was maybe Glaive or yeah, something, but it was, it was little, they had little slivers, right? So Astralis is the most fundamentally sound team, and that's why they can pivot the most, I think. That's why they can, uh, ooh, oh, oh, dear. <laughs> Duncan, right. stay between the oh, two mate. of them, all right? <laughs>
<laughs> if any punches get thrown here, good day, man. Listen, I'm the neutral party now. <laughs> Isn't that For unusual? <laughs> now it's the time I get wrecked. No, oh, no. He's the one getting wrecked. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. He's got all the Brazilian You, at least thought you yeah. see that tweet I did earlier? All your my whole Twitter's just been blowing up nonstop. <laughs> they love you. You have seen that oh, before, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them yeah. I showed him. Yeah. He's the first one. I'm like, dude, Duncan, here, I'm on the ride He merely now. adopted the Brazilian flame. I'll call it. <laughs> exactly. Forged. The uh, only question is, right, you, you know the rules of banter. When you say one thing, the other person thinks, is there something funny I can connect to what they said, right? The problem is when you say to him, like, we're one of the most dedicated teams we're practicing all the time, the obvious but rebuttal is, well, why are you rubbish then? That's a good one, Tony. <laughs> but I have seen you done better. You have done better in the past. You know. Well, being rubbish is a matter of a lot of things involved in that. Okay. Right? Okay. And I think what I tweeted out, it was more about what I wanted to say and how I felt than what he said because what Samuel said is basically what a lot of people say. You thought he was like so it was it's like more a about me than you. So I apologize for that. That's, but that's all I took away from it as well. That's why I didn't answer because I'm just like exactly. you know, yeah, it's, it's more about me than real. about you. This isn't bullshit. Like this is bullshit. This isn't real. And it's then fine. basically a lot of people sometimes they come and say some things like those guys don't really want to win anymore. Like, yeah, of course. Because sure. they think it's easy. Like those guys wanted before. They got it. So they if they want again, they can do it again. But they don't want because now they have money or now they have something. No, the problem you That's guys have until you win the championship again is everyone think it's because, here's your problem is when you came up, it was like a movie. The story was like, you mm -hmm. know, they were grinding, they moved to another country yeah. even to do it. They were sleep. It's but beautiful. It, it's like a brilliant yeah. Rocky. It's like and a Rocky story. They were even yeah. sharing like two people had to stay in one bed because they didn't even have enough room. So the problem is then when you win the championships and now you've got the brilliant lifestyle, people want to spin it the other way and make it like, oh, now they just, it's too much money and they but don't care what, about the game. But that's, that's what, what I want to say. Think. Like, yeah. it's easy to think about that, but mm -hmm. we have been working hard for a long time. And of course, there is periods of time where there's been some slackness because that happens to everyone. Sure. Even you guys as casters, sometimes yeah. you're going to say, hey, I could be doing more here or there. Sure. That's natural. But then it was more about me wanting to say something. I tweeted, I, I had my my answer there on Twitter. I was like, should I post it or not? Because I knew... Yeah. Somehow I was a little, Wait, I was a little bit wrong. You can do that? Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I wasn't even aware. You, you, you can think about tweeting out. <laughs> right? You just tweet. Yeah, no, no. I what know. I mean is I had it right yeah, there. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, should I post it? it? Yes. Because yeah. there is some some things I want to say that yeah. is inside me and I want to pull it out. But at the same time, it might create a reaction that's not really fair to him because we are friends. We have been out of the tournaments yeah, together. That's true. You know. But in the end, I was like, I'm going to do it. Like It's inside me. It's going to make me feel bad. So I'm going to tweet it out. So I apologize if someone, if it creates some better aspects in that you regard. You know it. You know, <laughs> you know it. It's all but good. It's, it's all right. And what I wanted to say is never doubt our hard work because it's there. The passion is there. I, I didn't get to this point by playing for money. You guys know in Brazil it was much worse than the other sure. uh, region. Like we played for a sandwich. We played for getting your bus ticket back home. So mm -hmm. that was never the point. And it's still not the point for us. And when I see people, not you in this case, but a lot of Med fans who come, hey, this guy has everything now. He doesn't need to play or he doesn't want, he's going to fulfill, gonna, not going to do everything he has to do. And it's just a lie because I work hard. And that doesn't I, even I, make sense lot, anyway, you know? because here's the thing. If you actually know anything about rich people, millionaires just look at billionaires like, how do I get to that level? Yeah. So it doesn't matter that he's got like the Rolex, you know, he's got the nice shoe. He wants a mansion. He wants a pool. <laughs> he wants his own no, team. No, 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 real. Game and club. Like, to be honest, it would be much easier for me just to go home and stream. I okay. can make money as well. Yeah. If I go home and I keep streaming, it's going to be much easier for me. I'm going to be very close to my family. I'm going to be close to my girlfriend. Okay. I'm going to do everything whenever That's I, I want. That's kind of you to let Gowler still have a career. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Just kidding. Gallus is a god. Yeah, he's a cool guy. <laughs> but uh, so it much. E it seems like we take the easy path, but the easy path is giving up. The easy path is oh, of course, of course. Is, is I, doing something else, you know. And we want to try to be the best thing again. And, and it's hard. A lot of players nowadays, a lot of the young guys, they come in. Those guys are living what we live in the past. Like they, this is the only thing they do in life. So it's much easier for them to even play more than us. Mm -hmm. So we have to, to do it all over again, and it's harder when you get older. Yeah, well, I, I think like people don't really understand what you as an individual have built, right? Like obviously, what you did in Counter Strike, and like I remember when you guys like we're talking that uh, 2015, 2016 period of time, right? You're like, well, maybe more, more so the 2016 stuff. The mid round Counter Strike that you guys were playing, and the way that you guys were doing theory work was above and beyond anybody else at that time. That was one of the things that I admired the most with you guys. But then at that same time, 
you had the weight of the entire country on your back, right, as a, as a team, because then there was just you guys. Obviously, you had the Gamers Academy guys and all that kind of stuff, but you guys were the ones leading the way, and all that time. This is why I don't know how you do everything you do, because I follow you on all the social media stuff. I'm like, how the hell has Fallen have time in the day to do all these things? You have built, like, an empire around being one of the best Counter-Strike players ever to touch, well, in-game leaders to touch the game, one of the, you know, the most exciting orpers, all this stuff. You've literally built an empire. Like, the stuff you have your own gaming brand, all these kind of bits and pieces. I think people have to realize here, you're obviously doing, everybody lives their life, right, for themselves in the sense of, you know, you want to make sure that you can you live a comfortable life. Not only has he done that, he's brought to his scene, he was running things for his countrymen to give them opportunities to get to compete, still competing, and then building all his own businesses. Jesus Christ. Like what you what you've done, right? I so are, are you just trying to back up my argument? No, now? no, I'm saying what Fall has done. <laughs> Where are you going with this still, one? Because he did all this while still competing at the top, right? He was already doing a lot of things sure. while competing at the top. Mm -hmm. So like the argument then, right, of of saying, oh, of course, we all know when we get paid for something, right? When I got paid to start playing Counter Strike, it changed. It wasn't the same level of like obsession and joy. It became like I wake up and I have to do this every day, right? Like, but it came. Well, yeah, it becomes like a, a job at some point. Yeah, right. And that that switch is going to happen with everybody here. But I think what people forget is, and this is the point I'm trying to make here, is that Fallen was doing that while still being one of the best Counter-Strike players in the world. We're going back a couple of years now. He was still already building all this stuff. He was still already super busy, right? He was still already doing all these other bits and pieces. Well, what, what do you think about this, Fallen? Well, basically, that's something I have been putting some thought recently. And what happened is I never wanted only to play. Like, I don't see myself only putting time into playing. And when I say playing is basically if I go deathmatch, why not go deathmatch and string it? Like, sure. it's, it's, it's both. Sure. I can do both. If I do both, why don't I make a video as well? So I show some people how it goes and I get people to follow me more and more. So I try to combine things that make sense and I have pleasure doing it. So basically in 2015 and 16, I would go for tournaments. I would record my own vlogs. I would yeah. edit my own vlogs. I would yeah, play yeah, the yeah, tournament I and I would win the tournaments. So I had much fun doing it and people would say, hey, how can you do it? And I say, I like it. And also, For me, it's a pleasure. Like it's not work. I, I go back to my, to my hotel room, 8 to 10 p.m. instead of going watch some series i'm going to edit my videos and then i'm going to be able to see the comments later i'm going to be able to get more fans and, and, and share what is this passion what is being a counter-strike player to everyone and that's going to help the entire ecosystem because a lot of people are going to be like me or they're going to share the same goals or they're going to live the same passion and share the same dreams you know so i always wanted to do that but then it's it's something that happens into teams you start winning and then you start losing later, and yeah. some of people might think, hey, this guy's not putting the same effort. But I got there doing that. You know, like, uh, that's what moves me along. That's what, what you're saying is power. nothing has changed. Not has changed of... it to me, but we're losing now. But now you, suddenly you have to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, I start feeling that people were feeling that I was putting effort into something that was not helpful towards winning. And then I kind of lost motivation to keep doing it at, at all power that I was done before, you know, like mm -hmm. at the same level. So I started dropping slowly, dropping slowly, dropping slowly. And then gaming wasn't just as fun for me anymore because it was never only about playing for me because I, I needed that connection. I am a guy who really enjoys when people, are, when I can share stuff I do, you know, because I like it. I don't know. I can't really give it much explanation, but I feel when I do a stream and I play FPL game and I have fun, if people are watching it, I have more fun. So it's, mm -hmm. it's even better. I, I like it more. So when I start, I stopped doing all those things, it suddenly starts being a little bit more depressive for me in that sense because I didn't have the same f amount of fun as I had before. So I start doing less and less in 2017, a little bit less in 2018. And then before this last year, like 2019, I was like, 2020, I'm going to try to be myself again. Like, it doesn't matter if I win or not, I'm going to do the same thing I like to do before. Are you doing the, are you doing the vlogs again? So the vlogs is something I, I'm going slow. Yeah. Because nowadays, nowadays you have the, the daily Instagrams, like the stories itself. So I started with the stories because it's easier. Yep. Then I, I, was, sure. I was trying to make sure. And I stopped already. So it's hard to continue doing it. But for the first three weeks of January, I was like posting every day how my day was going. And, and I was having fun doing it. But then the, the, the shadow is hard. When I go for practice, I start at 10 a.m. I stop at 9 p.m. And sometimes it's non-stoppable, like only for eating and stuff like that. So sometimes I lose energy to do all those things. And then after a week, I look back and I say, I didn't really do the stuff I wanted at all on that regard, but it's fine because we're in a boot camp and I'm totally focused on Counter-Strike at that moment, but it's fine. But I want to get back to it. So for me, it's always trying to find this balance and it's what makes me going forward and it's, I have pleasure doing it. So when people look that way and they say, this guy's not focused, 
how is he selling stuff? How is he has a store in Brazil? How he has his own brand and how he has his own YouTube videos? He can please, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's actually the opposite. Because I have all those, I'm going to play even more CS. And that's what's driving me forward. So that's mm -hmm. the way I think, you know? I, I think one thing that, like, my playing career wasn't very long and I wasn't very good. But uh, something that I want to point out here is when we made the transition from Vox Eminent to Renegades and we moved, right, and things weren't going well, as somebody who, because like, I'm sure you look at it the same way as I do, when there's problems, you want to try and fix them, right? When you're in the situation where you're going from event to event and you're trying to fix problems while traveling around between tournaments and maybe there's not enough time to practice or there is enough time to practice and you re-go over everything, it's so difficult when there's, because Counter-Strike doesn't really stop. This is the longest break period I think we've had in, in quite some mm -hmm. time, actually. Yeah. Less and, four years, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's like an actual chance to reevaluate. If you don't get a chance to reevaluate, and because you're reacting off of the problem that you're seeing. None of that might not be the cause of the issue. There could be a different cause. There could be another issue. Could, if you don't get a chance to stop and actually look at it, you're going to find yourself in a pretty miserable position. And that, that's like what happened to me. I, d I didn't know. Now that I have all the knowledge I have now, I go, oh, we should have done it this way. I should have been an a leader like this. I should have done that. But as you're in the thick of it, because this is new for everybody, right? This whole thing is new for everybody still. We've been doing Counter-Strike for a long time, but we're all learning. And we all started as kids, right? We all started as like teenagers and stuff growing up through this. We're all learning as we go. Now we're finally getting people coming and giving us, giving us advice on, you know, hey, we've done this in traditional sports. This works. That doesn't work. But that's only happening in the last, you know, couple of years. That's not something that's been around for a long period of time. So we're all kind of learning as we go here. It's I've a, it's given a it, environment. Listen, I've given everyone a lot of room on this one. I've let you flesh it out. I think this topic's boring. I want to talk about Counter-Strike. So all right. here's what I want to ask, right, is one thing I've noticed in Counter-Strike as to why teams go to the top and then they don't just become like number two, number three. Sometimes they drop way off and they go down and they have to rebuild is when you get to the top, you certain things you did, your formula to become successful, until you realize that it doesn't work anymore, you try and just keep repeating it, or you try and just tweak it a little bit. And so one of the mistakes people can make, just look at Nip at the beginning of the game, is you just keep the same players. You think, right, we can change the roles. Virtus Pro did this a lot, you know. Change never change the players, though, because these are the players that got us to the top. So sometimes, I think like with Carrigan and Faze, even if separately, Carrigan's a brilliant in-game leader. As players, Nico and the others are brilliant players. Eventually, like it runs its course. You have to break apart sometimes. Someone has to go, someone has to go elsewhere. So I think that core of you, Fur, and Cold Zero that were there the whole time, I think something had to change. Whether someone was going to retire, whether Cold Zero wanted to go somewhere else, you have to reinvent the team, right? You can't just keep trying to do like a better version of what we did in the past always. Yeah, basically, uh, I think we played a very fundamental CS most of the time. And when we added the Americans to the lineup, they had a whole different concept of how to play the games and some fundamentals that we had straight on, like you don't play a 2v1 by yourself. Yes. You basically don't push for a third, a second frag with the 5 4 you know, like mm -hmm. we have this fundamental CS going on for us for a whole time and it suits well CS before 2017 because people were not so aggressive, people would not go for much information on CT side, so it made sense, it made the, the game was easy to read, so it all made sense. And when the game starts evolving, people start getting more aggressive, and then suddenly the map control you got, they're going to challenge it. So suddenly you're going to lose a player or you're going to lose the map control you, you thought you had. So the game yeah. changed a lot. And basically all the fundamentals we had, they were not perfect anymore for the actual game that was being played. And then we got new players, got new American players, and they have different styles. And suddenly we start doubting ourselves about yeah. all the fundamentals we had. like, And even the good ones, because it's not that the game changed on, on sure. a point where all the fundamentals now were wrong. It's like 20% of them has to be changed somehow, but the rest is still pretty good but what happened is we start losing a little bit and then those players would question hey you guys are still a little bit outdated on that point so we start are we thinking wrong about everything and then suddenly we didn't have any fundamental at all I, I, I thought at some point our team lost a little bit of the strong fundamentals we had just gone so well, the way I see it the easier way to explain for CS players is CT side for example when you hit the, bo the bottom on that regard on fundamental regard you have three players holding A Inferno, two players holding B. You have no confidence they're going to hold, so you have to put the fourth player on A or you have to put the third player on B. You never trust those two guys are going to be able to do their job. So you always think, hey, it's a new method, it's a new counter-strike, you have to be gambling, you have to be finding it. So you start playing in a way where we're always taking those small risks, but they're not smart. They're, they come from fear. They come mm -hmm. from not confidence, for, from not have a, for not having a confidence. And then it's just smart decisions, it's not weak decisions. And then in the end, everyone is playing one weak game. So in the end, there is no f strong fundamental thing. So it's so the game changed a lot, and people start trying to do better and do more than they should have done, and then it's all weak. So that's what I felt it happened to our game, and that's why we're trying to reinvent for this year. 
So we're going back to a little bit of the fundamentals we had, making sure that the, the, the good things are still good things and learning the new ones. So that's well, what we're trying to do. That's the follow-up, right? That's where we go with this. Because I've been told recently that you guys are practicing a lot. So how has the practice been going? How has been the you preparation? You made a joke about that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have been practicing a lot. So basically, that's another topic we also try to change in 2020. Because the way we practice, even after we change taco, I, like uh, we far decline, it's too much quantity and not much quality, in my opinion. Because we have always been a very strategic team. We always like to understand well the game. It's not about killing the other guys. It's about really understanding where and when we're going to do the actions. And basically, when we play too many games, you don't strike too many from them. So let's say we play six maps a day. Fifth and sixth map are basically... Waste of time. Waste of time. Yep. You're not, not going to get much from it. So for 20, 2020, we start first two weeks playing only four maps, and we're going to watch all the maps. So every time we play a map, we watch it. If we play a game, we watch it. So you, you, you start feeling the progression. You start feeling better about it. It's only four maps, but you watch all of them. So this is making our lives a little bit easier, and we're getting more from the practice. But as it starts rolling in, you don't want to stay with only four maps as well. We start adding a fifth one. We try to add the sixth one, it's impossible. Like yes, You're right. mentally gone for the sixth one. If you really play the four ones how you should play, you, you can't play the six maps. Day. And that's even a conversation for two bo 3s on the same tournament. It's it's really hard. And we, I have lost tournaments because of it. Mm -hmm. Of course, of, because of my opponent like as well. But five even majors, well, right? I had to play. I have one of the team that has to play two bo 3 on the same day. Dude, this, if if I have the same situation all days, I would say, hey, I'm not even going to play it. Because well, it's dude. not really fair. Now I can see it. At the time, I would say, no, it's fine. We can take it. Like, we are a good team. We're the best team in the world. We can take two. No, it's really tough. Like, you're not going to be the same level. Well, you can watch a lot of this when it comes to, like, the, the UFC or whatever. They do the behind the scenes and how their boot camps go and then leading up to the event. And then they start imitating the event. Is that something that you guys do with your boot camps, with your practice right now? It's like the closer you get to an event, it's like, okay, we're going to try to do two best of threes a day because that might happen to us in the event. Yeah, so we should be say ready that. for that. Yeah. Or is it like, oh, we're only doing best of ones, so we're only going to do best exactly. of one format for our practice so that we're getting in that space. Is that something you guys have tried? It's something we discussed, it, but it's really tough to really prepare yourself. And it also because in a tournament, you're going to be more focused because it's a tournament. On practice, even if as much as you want to push it, like it's not a tournament. So mentally, you're not going to come to the same level, even if you try to, as much as you can. Yeah. So it's really hard to really reproduce it, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's something for... But uh, everyone in CS knows that it's not properly to play two build trees in the same day nowadays, which is good for the same. Yeah, I remember talking to LMBT a couple of years ago, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, when he was coaching Mouse, he was like, yeah, we, we practice five maps because the most we can ever play is a best of five grand final, right? So that's the most maps they would do in a day in terms of actual scrims. Okay. Um, uh, he may have updated that from his coaching position since then. But uh, I remember him telling me that. I, I'm curious about what you make of Counter-Strike at the moment, right? With the economy changes, with, with, the, with the Krieg, obviously. Definitely. Can we get there? No, yeah, we can get there. Let's just have that be the last question because okay. I know Fallen, you're going to come back and we're going to have more time to talk with you later. I don't want like, to just talk talking you to right you now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mainly on Twitter. <laughs> that was a good one, no? Yeah, we love it. We love it. <laughs> All right, but yeah, sorry, uh, Chad. Let's, let's do that one and then we'll get James back in. Yeah, what do you make of current Counter-Strike? Where it is at the, at the moment? Uh, I think it's great. Yeah? I'm not winning, but it's great. Really? Why? Yeah, you don't, you don't have great. a problem with the economy changes or anything like that? I don't have an economy a problem with it. Okay. I think it's a... Fair game. I think the quick is still a little bit overpowered, but Should besides be more that, expensive or nerf or change some of the. the uh, I think when you go very far distance, it shouldn't be one shot anymore. Okay. You know, like it's too OP. Even when the CTs get it, the game's changed yeah. completely. So, like, train, for example, you get a Krieger or holding a side, one shot from, from Ivy towards mid entrance, like it's too much. Like, I think it's too much. Okay. That's fair. Cool. That's fair. All right. Well, Fallen, like I said, you're going to be joining us again later, so I don't want to hog all your time. Sounds good. Uh, we'll get James back in. We'll all right, you won't change. fight, Simler, all right? You won't uh, fight. There was <laughs> no kidding, fight bro. to begin with. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Matt. Take care, man. Right, cheers. See you guys. And um, we got James back. Yeah. <coughs> James, <coughs> thanks for um, you survived. being patient. Now yeah, that he's no, not survived. here, we can actually talk about some other topics about <laughs> MIBR that don't involve him. Because there's one <laughs> angle, right, that we couldn't bring up there. I mean, to be fair, he was giving me his life story, so I didn't have a chance to get in. <laughs> Someone shut you up. It happens oh. every now and again. If they're just boring, yeah, I can't say anything. So, I, so anyway, he thought it was one of his vlogs. He got got to in the vlog in. He thought, I said, like, guys, uh, earlier today, I was having a vegan salad. I wasn't an egg salad. Anyway, get that out of the way. <laughs> what I was going to say is this. You also have to realize one of Fallen's strengths over his career is, you notice he recycled a lot of the talent that was within the Brazilian scene. He had them all before Bolt, everyone else steel. had them. Mm -hmm. And if he ever brought them back, it's because he actually saw something later that was good, right? So mm. an eye for talent that he has is very, very good. You've seen he's almost never made for the first three or four years – 
the wrong choice once he's had a chance to see that player. Right? Yeah. It's the right one next. The last year and a half, every report you've seen from credible journalists of I'm targeting this player, I want this player, he hasn't got any of them. Mm-hmm. He, he even lost Didn't Coltier case, in the didn't meantime. Get case yeah. He, yeah. He, he had to literally get someone now that wasn't even on anyone's radar. Yeah, no, and part of the reason why is the the business has changed in that sense. Like, you know, we have that moniker from the godfather of Brazilian CS. It's almost like that. If he tells someone, uh, you come here, you, you join the MIBI now. They do. They would just come. Yeah. Nowadays, that doesn't happen. Like, no. The business means, actually, he's not getting those players. Like, imagine this. Imagine when Astralis had to get rid of Kirby. He'd left the team, right? Imagine if they couldn't have gotten Magus and Config wasn't even available. And then you couldn't even have gotten, I know, Valde. In fact, you had to go all the way down and get somebody yeah. who now is in Mad Lions. You yeah. had to take him, and then everyone says to you, Glaive, you're a loser, mate. You can't even win anymore. Look at you. What do you do? Why do you do what you used to do back in the day? Or imagine more recently when they had to, so FaZe Clan was able to buy Cold Zera. Imagine they had to get two players like Brocky and put in their team. Mm. And then people are judging them against FaZe Clan that almost had an era. Like, it's real tough to do. Like, the hardest thing in the game, in my opinion, scouting talent's one thing. Winning with the talent, you got another thing. Taking talent you know is good, but then the reconfiguring it and like like what Carrigan just did in Mouse Sports, that is a miracle Red to me. How he took a team that he'd already played like a million maps, a million mess, best of threes, tons of tournaments, and then eventually he said, This doesn't work, but I don't want to kick someone yet. So I'm gonna do this one shit, I'm gonna change this role here and this that boom, that was it. That yeah. was the, that was actually the one little tweak he needed, and it changed everything because the knock-on effect can be huge. And the beautiful part of what Carrigan did for Mouse Sports is when you're talking to the players, even they feel like they have more of a role and a say in what's going on, and they feel a lot more kind of like confident in the decisions he's making. And having that confidence in in-game leader, how many teams are affected by not that? The, that? That right there is the key point, and I think that was his undoing in phase, is, you know, when you get to these finals, yeah. you get to these crunch matches, and then you make a bad call, or you start, and then, like, that face at Major, where I, we, I could stand r- right there and hear the teams communicating through a banner, like what we have behind us here, and I could hear Nico calling every round. And I made that, that, that tweet then during that face at Major, thinking, you know, this is a possibility this could be going on. But that right there, that echoes... That, that, if you're an in-game leader like a Carrigan, you're a hardcore, you're a ride or die in-game leader, mm-hmm. and people start telling you to... You know, I, I, I obviously don't know exactly what they said, but they take your role. And the one, when you're an in-game leader like that, you actually... When your call goes right, you get confidence. Cool. Then you make another good call, and it keeps building. And then you individually Spiral. start making plays. Yeah. And then we see him like he's in Mouse now. Sure. He's pushing banana. He's going for these entry frags. He's finding gaps. And then the Ropses and Frozens and Woxics of the world like... He's just made us so much room. He's just given us this much information because he has to be fantastic at communication, being a leader. And then they can just come in and play their little, you know, nerdy current day Counter Strike. It's when I was speaking to Woxic, he's the person that was merely like super positive on this because he said the whole time he was on Hellraisers, he felt like he was hindered and was not able to kind of let off and play that. Oh, you know, he likes to get super hyper aggressive and be out there taking shots. And he says sometimes Carrigan will just say to him, do what you want. Yeah, just go kill people. Just go and do your thing. And for someone like him, that's the perfect freedom you need to give to him because he does have those games where he just shut people down. Is that mad one on Nuke where he took him to overtime? Oh, that was ridiculous. And it was just Woxic every single time. Bomb, bomb, bomb. And you're then giving players confidence outside of the game that translates inside the game as well, which is huge. We might need to get like a, a like a, a new name for some of these players, like Carrigan, because there's a couple of them left. Like mm. we needed, they need to be like a tribe or something. Like the, <laughs> the last wide swingers, because no one wide swings anymore, no. right? Everything's a jiggle pig, this a jump, but that. You got some still some of the some older guys. boys, some of the older boys still wide swingers. The you know, white boys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, we definitely need something for That's them. That's suitable. We're in London. That yeah. works. There you go. Yes, but uh, look, if we just circle back to MIBR for a second. I think the most disappointing factor for me... <laughs> Last of the swingers. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, he really knows how to get a group involved in what he wants to uh, do. And he gets oh something from this guy. Oh he gets something from this guy. He's watching this guy. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> there we go. Semler, quick. <laughs> no, no, where does this go? Where Jeez. does this go? Chad, uh, is your point, man. Uh, is, is that <laughs> That's what he's probably saying. They flip... <laughs> Where does this go? Where does this go? <laughs> they flip flop, flip flopped on this main orb role already yes. since Kanji's joined, yeah. right? Kanji came in, fallen, took more of a back seat. It wasn't mm-hmm. working. Now fallen's taken back primary orping. So that dynamic right there is the one that I want to see flushed out because KNG Flush should out. be the most exciting prospect in this team mm-hmm. in terms of what he was able to l- deliver when he was on INTZ and when they're in the grand final of uh, the Katowice, uh, the Krakow Major. 
uh, the PGL one, right? Yes. Like him and Henny were like combat orping fantastically. They were very now Counter Strike once again it keeps changing, but him as a player is very exciting for me. And if he can sure. get activated, or well, you've got him activated, you know, Fur is always going to get his. He's that type of guy. See, and 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 Fallen could can be consistent on the AWP. Mm -hmm. Now we start talking. You know, now we actually have a, a picture to to work with here. At the moment. We haven't seen a lot. Still struggles on Inferno. Still picking Inferno. Well, first of all, I thought that was one thing I did think was hilarious. That when you gave the example of fundamentals breaking down on CT side, he just went with Inferno immediately. Like, <laughs> one of their when you have the three people yeah. on here that are really good, like Cold Zero uh -huh. in the pit, but you can't trust those two people that I put in B. I mean, whoever's playing in B at that time. <laughs> and, you, know, you can't. You, you just wait in the rotate. I was like, oh, interesting example there. Hypothetical was still fallen. Yeah. No, but here's the thing. I'll tie that in. I actually feel like that's part of what the struggle is because you notice his whole mindset still is like we've got to be one of the most fundamental sound teams if you've got KNG you've got fur you've got a brand new player yeah, at team. this point in time and fall himself a very good to play like I don't think you want to be playing basic counts I don't what you want to embrace the chaos you want to have yeah. a high up tempo you want to be more like the immortals of KNG as you say but then you've got to reinvent the wheel in a little way right sure. because you look at counter-strike at the moment across the top dogs they all have that gear but they're not built on that, right? Like, mm. Astralis are the most fundamentally sound. Adapts, when he had control of NRG, they were fundamentally sound, but he was using his individuals more than he was using their fundamentals towards yeah. his tail. And now that Stan's sure. taken over, he's further this way, obviously more about plays and all that kind of stuff. Liquid is a team built on these individuals who can multi... They're fundamentally sound, but the way that that, that team can multi-frag in any given moment, fantastic. Nobody right now is playing like a hyper-aggressive style of CS, and... It's something that, you know, if you're struggling like MIBR, ah, why not even at least try dabbling with? Because what have you got to lose, realistically, right? Like, if you have a crack, you come up with some really hyper-aggressive moves, I, you, you have to think a lot of these maps, a lot of stuff's already been flushed out and it's not going to work anyway, but maybe something that's going to catch them off guard. I don't even know what that could be in 2020 anymore. Like, it's it's so difficult now with the amount of mm. research going into... The, the game is being looked at like never before, yeah. right? Like, th that's why teams are having a hard time, right? That's why they're having a hard time because the game, your tendencies now, I, I watched a bunch of, um, there was a matchup, I think it was like Pro League or something, I forget the tournament. It's going to be FaZe versus MIBR and I thought they were definitely going to play Dust2, right? Like I was like, I feel like Dust2. So I watched so many demos on Dust2. Brokey, for example, would play the same position every single round on B. He would go straight to that car position, right? Now, this is just one example. I watched, I watched a bunch of demos. I, I didn't, I'm not doing as much work as what the, we're talking about the analysts for teams who know their matchups. They're going much deeper than I am. Within the space of watching this, Brokey would always go, he'd always throw the Molotov, that's how he would stop a rush, and then Cold Zero would rotate late and come through window and back him up. That was how they worked on B. I compared that to the way MIBR did it. Taco would go and throw a smoke, and his rotator could, all, could be late because they would have more mid presence. If Taco gets run over because he throws a smoke at all, that's tendencies right there. I did that within the space of an hour and using one of these programs that I can like scrub through and look at that. That is being done by everybody yes. with teams of people to give them this information. With that information on board, the game has become so much harder. And that's why when I asked Fallen just then, does he feel like the, how the game is at the moment? I think what I look at as the biggest change here in Counter-Strike now with the money system, every round being able to be a gun round, because you never get an off round, because you're never granted really any, any round where you can make a mistake, every round now you need to be so super hyper focused on every single decision you make. I think that is a thing. People don't get a gimme round here and there anymore. That doesn't happen. We're seeing eco rounds, like pistol upgrade rounds, they're just as winnable as a full gun oh, round these days. It's, it's, it's insane. So I think that the mental fortitude and, and, and pressure in a game now that most of these games are going 30 rounds, <laughs> you know, we're talking so much more Counter-Strike playing with that constant focus. I think that Counter-Strike is less... It's less of a sprint and more of a marathon now, or what? Well, it's more. It's less exciting in in the curves of a game, in like the importance of like a, a round and a one v three, and how that breaks down for the next three rounds following. But more exciting in each round. In each round, I think there is more excitement, but the overall story, I think, has lost mm. some excitement. Because each round, if you break down, we obviously can't watch all 10 players at the same time, right? But if you're watching every little microcosm, every, like, uh, like those tendencies I was talking about, if you knew them and you knew that they were getting exploited, that is a story in itself. And that is in the, in the space of, obviously, broader of a game, but in one round of how they play off of each other, that right there is something that I think uh, is harder to highlight, for sure. Um, but maybe why a lot of the players like Fallen, for example, like the game at the moment, because it means that there's always a chance to get back in. You're never yeah. going to get locked out never because know. of like one round where That's you made a fair way of putting it. So I don't know. There's a lot to consider. This is stuff that we obviously all think about all the time.
Well, that's actually one of the reasons, in my opinion, why the two teams who came out of nowhere <coughs> last year to become elite teams was EG and uh, Mouse Sports. Yeah. Because in a world where you can go incredibly in depth and you can build these schemes as to we're going to exploit this guy and if they do that, that we do all the time because it's their best move, we're going to have the counter for it. They're the two best IGLs in the game, at not only having like the playbook, but then knowing like, right, I'm going to read in the game and I'm just going to make a mid-round call that no one can prepare yep. because I haven't prepared it. Yep. I'm going to make a read and I'm <laughs> yeah. the best at reading in the game. So you've seen, that's why Astralis has lost to these teams because in that scenario, Astralis did all the prep. That's why I I'm no surprise when they lose those games, it's not like when they've lost a game and the guy just outplayed them. They lose those games and they are banging the table and they're like, what's it? Mm -hmm. We knew he was going to... Yeah. Oh, but where did that come from? That wasn't in the demo when we did 15 hours research. So it doesn't mean that will make you the best team, but you can Over see how that will always be the counter to the dominant paradigm when the paradigm is you prep properly everyone knows the fundamentals we've all prepared here right you know the protocols of what we're going to do like that's why that's the count i think that's also why those aren't the best teams though like that works against certain squads it's not necessarily that consistent in its own right and there's also one factor here which when you're just watching it's obviously like we we yanko brought it out recently was the power of the confidence and i think that comes from like how individually sound you're feeling on the day right like if you're you're warming up and everything's going well and you know you've you've your favorite songs come on the radio on the way to the venue and breakfast has gone good these players it's not superstitious but like because it's a mental game you carry a lot of that stuff with you right yeah. for the whole day and i think that one of the factors here that it's not to do with counter strutting or any of this is just getting shot right like i remember <laughs> I, no seriously shooting <laughs> shooting the bad guys the more you get shot the less confidence shooting, you have I but find shooting, you could do whatever you want you can make the perfect call you sure. can do all this kind of stuff if twist is going to sit there and mow you down with three ak headshots bang 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 sure. it doesn't matter what yes. you did yeah. right it's gonna and make your second guess certainly exactly right and that's the one thing it's like that that point right there of just how get olaf said to me one time he, he said made a comment this is after one of our very few victories we beat uh, Fnatic at that Gfinity event. And he said, I, I, I didn't feel like I'd ever been shot that hard, right? Like, like we, we were just always in their face and always taking, like always getting the kills and they didn't have a chance to react. Counter-Strike can just feel like that sometimes. You know, you just jump in and nothing you do can, can get you out of that hole. You know, you can just be in that hole. You're just getting wrecked. Doesn't matter. You could run your strats. You could do, it, it's just not going to help you. And that's- <laughs> I just like, I still can't get past like what a boomer comment he just dropped in there when he was setting the story. Because I don't know, you're on the way there. Your favorite song comes on the radio. You're like, what? Wait, is this Marty McFly or something? You're like, you're going on the down, like, driver, turn that up. Like, hits FM all nonstop on the, like, oh, baby. The kids oh, still get baby. it in GTA. Yeah, yeah though, get night, baby. Turn that up. Turn that up. There we go. Come on, boys. Let's do this like we used to back in the day. The Renegades boys are hitting the town. <laughs> Uh, it's because Chad has lost so many of his headphones uh, now. Uh, I keep dropping them and leaving them. <laughs> and, uh, You've just gone for radio life. Yeah, where it's, you're at. it's simpler that way. Can't, can't lose the car radio. <sighs> That's the thing, though. I actually find that a weird angle that Yanko would have, though. Because, first of all, like you say, they always try to stress in phase, kind of, they're doing all this preparation and the planning. And, like, uh, as far as I can tell, like, Yanko's brother must own, like, a land center in Belgrade. Like, the excuses they have to go there constantly is ridiculous. But they keep going there anyway. I mean, they even went and played, like, in a mixed team and lost in a tournament. Did you see that? I, that I saw that playing in a mixed team. That was bad. Like they, they didn't win the tournament. Stuff, right? They didn't win the tournament. They had called Zero and Nico. They didn't win the tournaments anyway. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, uh, keep predicting them a real win real tournaments, but never mind. So, when they go there, right, they say they're doing this prep. If you have players like that and you lack confidence, there's something else going on there. There's something in the mental game. If yeah. I have Cold Zero next to me and I'm Nico, I've got all the confidence in the world. If I'm Cold Zero and I've got all of Meister and again, like that, that should naturally build into something, you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't. There's so much stuff we don't know. <laughs> you know, that's the you know, that's, of it, that's, isn't it? that's that's one of the things. A lot, obviously, a lot of the stuff we're doing here is either stuff we've heard behind the scenes or or, or just actual speculation, right? I think, uh, like. Well, I'd speculate, right? If you're talking about confidence for those guys, they used to win and they used to smash it the whole time with their previous teams. They come into this, they have a bit of success with Carrigan, it then obviously massively drops off. Then surely there's their confidence has gone in the first place that, yeah, we are great players, but we can't get it all together. Yeah. That's a major, major confidence blow. Yeah, and, and then we have the same thing in the sense of what we were talking about with Fallen, right? Like, if we're going to put... If, if anyone was going to put that tag of, oh, you know, they, they make enough money and they don't need to, you know, perform anymore, mm. you could put that tag on a lot of, a lot of oh, teams, Lord. right? Definitely no. it's, not just, it's not just the MIBRs of the world. It, uh, like, these players are living comfortably, right? So the thing driving you to, to play is your competitive drive. Mm. How badly do you want to be the best, 
right? No. That right there is a question that you probably have to ask yourself every single day when you get up, right? Symbol's the perfect one of that. It just plays nonstop all the time. Yeah, that's always no the argument, happening. right? The, the stoogies, the simples. Yeah. yeah. Get home from a tournament. Grind. One hour later, you're already playing FPL streaming it. Yeah. Like, okay. The funny thing is, though, I, yeah, Fallen, when he was getting upset there, like the implication of that is like what he didn't address is there are pro players that are like that. Like, I'll tell you right now, this is half speculation, half confirmed, which is that that is what Guardian was doing in Na'Vi for the last few months. Like, think about it, right? He's absolutely burned to a crisp. He's been playing for years. This guy might be yeah. playing for like 14 years straight in Counter-Strike mm -hmm. every day of his life. Then he was in the FaZe Clan lineup where it got worse and worse and worse mm. and worse and worse. And when he came to Na'Vi, what was the reason why it was going to work with him and Simple? Because he wasn't coming to be the star player. I'm just coming to all bro. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to do this, that. He's when a you journeyman. See, when you see the way he played, I think instead of joining Na'Vi, he should have just taken three months off and he should have reset completely because I basically reached out to him and I said to him, like, listen, mate, I don't know what's happened to your form, but this isn't the Guardian I've ever seen. Like, I've never mm. seen... It's not even the idea that, like, you're just playing bad. You're, like, consistently bad when you play now. Like, you're mm. actually... You literally sometimes are a liability. And essentially, I won't say what he said, but it was communicated to me that, like... Yeah, I basically need a chance to like build back up again. Like where I am right now isn't where I should be. Like I didn't necessarily he intimated like maybe he didn't put in the hours or maybe he was just doing like the bare minimum. He was just going to see what happened for a few tournaments and then yeah. make a decision. So I mean, in this case, they caught him already. He didn't get a chance. But to, he's he's to on the bench back. now, right? Yeah, in theory. Yeah, I mean, it, in theory. Seems... But I mean, that is the scenario where, like you say, three months on the bench. Sit there, recap, re readjust. Who's going to buy? Who's, I don't think they're putting back on the main roster unless you know someone blows a gasket or something. But in the I mean, it's still Guardian. Yeah, but if who's going to buy? Smart, here's what he does, right? Again, we're, we're not supposed to go into some of the other <laughs> tournament organized stuff, but I'll just say this. In a world where there's going to be another league where teams are buying into, and there's, potentially there's this incentive to spend money to get players. He's someone where, you take a if risk. you're a team, yeah, who can't get a, yeah. you can't get an equal, you can't get called zero, you can't even get, like, let's just say someone like Valde, you can't get him because he's an OG now, right? Actually, Guardian's not a terrible one. If you want to take a risk and you want to tell him, listen, I'll make a team. I've got these players that are young players. I've got this player that's like just a journeyman, stable, like an AZ type guy. He's going to just do his job. He's all right. What about if I bring you back in and I put the team around you and you tell you have to commit to me, though. You have to say that you're ready to go all in again and you're ready to be the yeah. Guardian that was three years ago. That's where you could potentially have that, like, maybe he has another year and a half for him where he can be really good again. But I feel like there's got to be, everything has to come together. There's got to be the impetus. But I also will say, when you're a player like Guardian, that's why I reached out to him. I didn't buy the angle he's just bad now. Nah. I've never really bought that with Get Right. Like, what, he's just a support... Nah. Like, to me, it's the same story with Get Right. When Get Right got worse, he voluntarily became the support player. That's actually, a, uh, that to me the is a mentality. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you're even telling yourself, ah, I can't do those things anymore. That's why, a lot, in, back in the day, the angle you went with was, I'm old, which yeah. we know now mm -hmm. is kind of whack. Like, yeah, I mean, that's not the case. You see a whole bunch of people who are bangers at 28. Like, they're yeah. amazing. So, to me, the whole angle on that one is, like, you can't, you can't limit yourself in that sense. And also, you've got to, you've got to actually acknowledge that, like, Things went badly and start new. You've yeah. got to start new for real, though. Yeah, I think yeah. that 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 mental, that whole thing isn't easy. Right? Sure. That, that as, a, as, a, as, a, as a mental thing for a lot of people isn't easy. Not anything that they've ever had to really come across either. Like, you look at the way that everything's kind of evolved to, especially for somebody like Guardian, who's come up through the grassroots of Counter-Strike. To be at this point now, I know you're saying like three months, right? Like a, a period of time off is definitely necessary. I thought for Oscar, it was it uh, it was necessary as well, but he has come back to Sprout and he's been doing nothing. He went yep. like minus 17 True. in their last series. They yep. lost the, to a Cillian's team, right? Like in an online event Flames, just, yeah. just last night or the night before or something like that. The thing is though, the distinction is this. If a normal player, like I'll get a great example is Kirby. Kirby was never like a Hall of Fame player. He was a good player. And at one point he like maybe hit a point of like he's bordering on very good. And then he went down again a bit and now he's nothing. He's just an okay player and he just plays in the scene right there's no real reason as to why i should necessarily think he'll ever be a great player it's probably had his chance he might, he might have had his window with someone like guardian because they were great and then they were great for so many years i'll always give a chance that it is other factors something else is impinging on it something in your life you maybe just not in the space to even play couch like but it's your job and you want to mm. make a living and you, have, you don't have other options like that's for example one of the things i've often said i don't go that hard generally on people like adren obviously the guy from uh, kazakhstan here not the coach sure. liquid because i know for someone like him every other option for a job in real life is terrible compared to being even a bad player in Inverters Pro now. So sure. if he really wants to just literally just be like, I'm just a journeyman now, here's my job, can I have my check? If that's the life he wants to live, that's cool. I can then say, right, I know he's not going for the top spot though. With people like Guardian though, I think there's always, there's always a chance to win the major. The hunger, yeah, yeah, he wants yeah. it. But that's the point. 
what's the point in playing the now with your guardian and being the worst player? The only reason yeah. to play is to get that major. So you may as well say, I'll, the next two years, if I, at the end of it, it's major or boss. But that's I why don't get it, I'm out. If I do, let's go hard. But that's why this Navi project was perfect. Like, in theory, yeah. If he was able to perform, right, this Navi project would have been perfect. Having really? the opportunity to play with simple and electronic, and then you've got, you, you think know, it's too much, though? Well, maybe. I thought, I, I, well, Duncan was saying, you know, about him not performing and stuff. I was thinking maybe he went in there because his tail end of phase was pretty dismal as well with a little bit of imposter syndrome. It's like, I'm now playing with the, the, the goats of tomorrow, right? Like the, the best players that Should work. Trying to chase a bit, they'll carry yeah. me to a yeah. major. He yeah. might maybe, not have had it. Yeah. Maybe he felt a little bit like I, I'm not as good as these guys and that could have hampered his, his performance He was right in well. that case, but you know, you should, the point is whether or not that could, is what I, had to happen. But gents, they're telling me we have to go soon, so. Uh, okay. They said we could talk for as long as we wanted. I mean, you can, you can close yeah, the thoughts. Fallen, <laughs> fallen you 75% of the time, just tell us what his yeah, breakfast yeah. was like. <laughs> Do we think EG are going to bounce back from their drop off towards the tail end of last year. It's all, here's the thing. EG literally is about one player and it's Breeze. Okay. If you see when they when Breeze plays badly, they have to rely on every genius call from Stanislaus to come in. Like Cirque has to go completely up. If Breeze is there at a tall and elite level, I think the rest of the pieces just fall into position. So he's the player where I know from talking to him, he felt super burned out. He didn't know where his game was going. Maybe teams actually started to focus in on him because before that he was just an okay player, wasn't he? Sure. So I, I feel like you've got to get your superstar back. Then we can look at the other peaks. I think the other pieces generally perform. Yeah, Cirque, Cirque was looking pretty good. Ethan definitely has Improved. a lot of moments. Yeah. I think like the weird thing with Ethan is when Stan joined, he initially dropped off, but yeah. then he had a resurgence later on when Breeze was dropping off a little. I think those two as individuals outside Together, of yeah. outside of Liquid, those two right there, they are sick. Like I they yeah. are mechanically very, very good players. Which is why it sucks that those two could go off in a game and they would come ninth. Yeah. You know, it was it was yeah. it was, it was whack. Because the systems didn't work somehow. Cert got progressively better though as the year went on as well, which helped them. Yeah, he got more consistent. And I think have them having a break, considering how many events they were at across NRG and EG across yeah. the whole year, having this break that hopefully gives them like, cool, okay, we're ready for it now. Get the hunger back year. a bit. Yeah, man. or just not feel like you're dead all the time from traveling. Yeah. Because at one point they went China, America, China, yeah. then to Europe. Like, what kind of a schedule? That's just unfair. I, I was talking, I forget who I was talking to about it from the team, but it was one of those things where they started the year and they didn't, they, they were a good team, <laughs> yeah. and then they made like two finals or whatever, or they made two top fours or something along those lines. And then all the invites for the second half of the year started okay, rolling in, right? Because yeah. they're normally six months in advance. And then they're like, oh, we're, we're considered good now. So you obviously sign on to everything. Let's go. You know, let's shove all in. And then the realization of traveling from New York after winning a trophy and getting off the plane and then getting and playing in Stockholm and being jet lagged and getting knocked out. That right yeah. there, I think, is a hard realization. You know, that was like, oh, okay. We might, need to, we might need to calm this one down. But hopefully for this year, teams, at least in the Smart. upper echelon, need to be smarter or should be smarter. Well, they should be as well, should right? Be. With this league, yeah. I mean, the league formats and all that that's setting up, it seems like there are perhaps going to be less opportunity for these lands to, to really get in here oh. to slam your schedule. Yeah, it, it I looked for a number of teams, like Mal Sports and EG, when you're looking at all the events they went to, some of the schedules just fly, it's an effort which is mental. Like That's never good for playing at like top level in anything, to perform in any standard, any, even for what we do. Mm. Well, guys, thank you so much. I think that's going to be it for, for now. Sweet. Um, cool. So we will have uh, Launders and Scrawny. They're going to come in after the break, and I believe it's going to be with a couple of the players from Liquid as well. So uh, we got to hear from Fallen. Fallen's going to be back with MIBR. For the rest of the day here on the stream, we're now going to get to start interviewing some of the players and get their thoughts on 2020 and where things are going with CS. So Liquid are coming up next with Scrawners. Uh, Scrawners. That's the name. That's good. Let's That's go. Good Scrawners. There you go. We'll be right back.